Hi, my name is Carlos Rivera, Global Product Specialist of FIFLO at DHI, and I would like to welcome you to this tips and tricks session about groundwater modeling using FIFLO. In today's session, we will focus on the FIFLO Python interface, especially on the use of particle trackings. Specifically, in the exercise, we would like to reproduce the picture that we see here, which is a, one of the basic and common applications in FIFLO, how to generate a streamlines or random walk particle trackings. So here we will have a pumping well with a specific amount of flow rate. And there is a head on the left and on the right. And the pumping well is extracting some water from the aquifer. And what we see here is the defined capture zone by the travel time backward streamlines in FIFLO. But let's do this outside FIFLO using the FIFLO Python interface. I have already prepared the demonstration script for you. And I would like to go through these different lines of the script to show you the basics of this concept behind. At the end of the demonstration exercise, I will point you to the right documentation where you can find a copy of this script. We start with importing the IFM module, the FIFLO Python uh, programming packages and a sub package called Enum. For numerical calculations, I will use a standard package in Python called NumPy, imported as PMP, and I would like to visualize the particle trackings, or particle traces by using the library called matplotlib. It requires a computed FIFLO file, a DAC file, is exactly the same file that I showed you previously. I would like to load the document, ifn.load document, which basically will open the DAC file and get the information available in this DAC file. Particles are special objects in this IFM interface, so we need to first create the object by dot the document corresponding to the imported DAC file, create particle tracer. If you would like to work with default settings, uh, which are applicable in FIFLO, for example, the radius or the different numerical settings behind the particle tracking calculation, then you can simply use set defaults. There are a number of settings that you require, for example, the direction of the particles, far, forward or backward, set tracking direction, or the the type of particle, so we would like to only use advective processes, this will be string lines, or you would like to include some dispersivity, the random walk particle tracking. And last but not least, the way of the calculation, steady or unsteady path lines or string lines. For demonstration purposes, I would like to take one of the wells in the DAC file, exactly the one that I showed you before. So we need to create some containers, Python list to store this information. What I'm doing here is basically just go through all the list of nodes and ask those ones who has a boundary condition. Alternatively, I could use the selections if I have stored the location of, of the wells in a nodal selection in the FIFLO document and just get the items of this. Once I know the well, so I have two wells, I'm just taking the first one, I would like to get the coordinates of this well, so x and the y coordinates. For the calculation of particles, we need a number of seeds per node. So we will have one single well and 24 particles outside. I would like to get the default radius of this of um, around this well. So I use this get default radius, which is a property or a method corresponding to the particle tracer. Here there is a difference with the graphical interface. So the method here in Python requires that you provide the coordinates where the seats will be based. So what we are basically doing here is just calculating the angles um, from the circumcycle corresponding to each of the 24 particles. And basically we are just doing some cosines and sine rules to get the coordinates of each of the points of these 24 seats surrounding the well coordinates, x and y well. The calculation of the particles is also part of this for loop in Python. 
PT, the particle object, generate path lines X and Y, just require coordinates. If it will be in, two, in 3D, you can also pass a third coordinate. The last part of the script is just basically use it to display some particle traces with the library matplotlib. But before displaying this, you need to know that the result of these particle tracers are three values. In this example, 2D, X and Y, and the third component is time. So the travel times from the, from the well or to the well location. For the nice visualizations, I would like to operate with a color map, one of the default sets of matplotlib rainbow. I would also like to normalize the values and then I start plotting. So I have basically subplots. I just plot the coordinates of the particle tracers, X, Y, and I color by the time T, following the color map C map. They will be displayed as a point with a little marker on a specific line width. I would like to also see the location of the well, so I display the coordinates of the well. It's just one point, X well and Y well in black with the marker a little bit thicker. And also I would like to show some limits to the plots. Uh, last but not least, I would also like to set some color bars. Uh, to understand the difference of travel times and set some titles and finally display the plot with plt.show. PLT is, is the short abbreviation for the matplotlib imported at the very beginning of the script. So let's run the script by pressing start and we can get the result. It just takes one or two seconds to, to create the plots and we see the information of the particle traces in in Python using the matplotlib library and FIFLO programming interface. We can modify any input value for the particle traces, like for example, seeds per node variable, and then we automatically get the update after running the script. If you would like to do the same picture with random world particle trackings, you can simply swap here the set tracking type to the value of one. Let's do it. Now you can clearly notice a certain randomness in the particle traces after switching to random walk. You can obviously modify parameters of dispersivity in the longitudinal and transverse dispersivity at the global level. If you would like to have heterogeneous distribution of dispersivity, you can also pass an elemental reference distribution, which has been stored in the fifth flow parameter to have dispersivity value in each of the finite elements. For, and use this value for the calculation. If you would like to know a bit more about these different powerful methods behind the FIFLO and Python interface, I highly recommend you to visit our online documentation. You will see a special section regarding the programming interface, IFM and Python. You can look for Python examples and you will find the example of particle tracers. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration exercise using particle traces with the FIFLO and Python interface.